Okay, hello everyone. Uh, <laughs> hi, uh, my name is Rob Moffat. I'm the uh, senior technical architect for Finos. And uh, thank you all for coming. I hope you're having a, a great, great time at OSFF. Um, so with me today, I've got Vicky Chung, Kay Shongche, and Priya Gupta. Did I get that right? That's all right. <laughs> um, yes, we're very grateful to be joined um, by a part of the Goldman Sachs OSPO team. I think that most of the rest of them are in the audience as well. So uh, thanks, guys, for, for coming along. Um, I'm going to just ask a few questions first before I get you to introduce yourselves. So um, first of all, OSPO. I presume everybody knows the term OSPO. It's becoming more and more popular. It means open source program office. And it's the idea that within a, an organization, there should be a dedicated part of that organization dealing with all the, um, the risks and the bureaucracy and all the work around uh, open source contribution and participation. Um, so can I just get a show of hands and find out, so who works in an organization which has an OSPO? Can you just raise your hands? So uh, maybe a third of people, and who here actually works in an OSPO? So again, a slightly, yeah, maybe 10 or so people, and obviously you guys as well, right? Okay, so let's, let's meet the panel. So um, Vicky, Kay, and Priya, would you like to introduce yourselves and just tell us what it is you do at the Goldman Sachs OSPO? Hi, my name is Vicky. I'm a program manager at the Open Source Program Office at Goldman Sachs. So I joined around this time last year in late November 2021. It's been a while, and I was actually the first non-founding member of the OSPO. So it's been really cool to see how we expanded uh, throughout the past year and did a lot of great stuff that we're about to share with you. Uh, my prior experience is in consulting in the tech industry as well as product management and data analytics and engineering space. Um, so I love working with developers, with users, business stakeholders, and this allows me to bring all these relevant skills into my current role. So now I focus on both program management and product management, both focusing on um, improving the developer experience at Goldman Sachs. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Kay. Can you guys hear me? Um, my name is Kay. I'm also a program manager and uh, the organizational change and development lead for the OSPO at Goldman Sachs. Um, so I saw such questions as how do we integrate an open source culture into the firm and how do we capitalize on opportunities to increase open source participation? I joined the team in February and I actually come from a non-traditional background. My background is actually in retail management. Um, I transitioned into tech, uh, graduating from a software engineering boot camp early 2021 and my passion lies in uh, the customer experience. I love supporting and developing people and uh, creating a very inclusive culture. Hi everyone, this is Priya. I'm one of the engineer in OSPO and I joined firm 10 months back and my job is to provide a standard infrastructure for open source contribution as well as building and monitoring tool for enabling and, um, enabling and tracking open source contribution in the firm. Before joining GS, I worked in other financial institutions and I bring in my skill of building and monitoring robust infrastructure and data warehouses. Awesome, thank you very much. Okay, um, so uh, I w just want to have a quick point of order. So if anyone's got any questions, we'll have a session at the end if you've got any Q's and A's you want to, to do. So please think about some questions as well. We're, we'll be interested to find out what the audience thinks. So um, as we saw earlier, there's, there, there are lots of people in this room who are working for organizations that don't have OSPOs. So what I wanted to do is take us back to Goldman Sachs as it was before you had the OSPO and maybe hear a bit about that and find out, you know, what, what, sort, what the circumstances were like to le that led you to starting one. Yeah, so Goldman Sachs has been involved in the open source community prior to the launch of OSPO. Um, you know, in 2012, we launched a GS Collection. It's not formally known as Eclipse Collections. 2016, we uh, open source Raladomo. And some of our more recent open source projects is uh, GS Quant. Uh, we have two projects that we've contributed to 
spinels, so that is Ketchit and Legend. Um, and so without having an OSPO, these projects really needed, they paved their own way. Um, engineers didn't really have visibility into the process of how to participate in the open source community. Um, and they also probably didn't know that they could. So launching an OSPO was a really big win for the firm. Um, our engineers are now uh, equipped to really participate in the open source community. Um, so we're really happy about that. Awesome. Um, so this, for the eagle-eyed among you, you will notice that there was a fourth person who was supposed to join us on the panel, uh, Bella Wiseman. And unfortunately, Bella was ill today. Um, and that's a shame because Bella actually, uh, along with Rohit, who's in the audience here, Rohan, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, Rohan. Um, they actually put together a memo to try and start the OSPO at Goldman Sachs. And uh, Bella told us about this. And it involved, you know, collaborating with, very, well, with all the different areas of the business, all the different concerns like legal, uh, different technology departments, trying to get sort of a buy-in from the whole firm in order to, to start the OSPO up. And, um, and I think you guys are, are the result of that, really, aren't you? You've been hired in because of that memo and that work that, that Bella and Rohan did. Um, so I guess the next question I wanted to ask you guys is, how is your OSPO structured at Goldman? Because I think, so my experience at Finos has shown me that there are lots of different ways you can do this. You can have, like, you can have an individual who is like, just takes on some of the job of a, an OSPO, or you can have like a whole guild of people who kind of come together and be an OSPO, comprising different parts of the firm. Or, as you guys have done, you've like got an actual dedicated OSPO team. So maybe you can just talk a bit about the structure of that team and what your individual roles are within it. Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, as I mentioned, when I joined, our team was really small. It was our MD who was going to give be giving a talk at 5.30, Yosha go. Um, Bella, our engineering lead, and our program lead, Rob Underwood, who's also here. And then there was me. So four people, very small. Um, coming from a consulting and product management background, um, I was uh, hired because I can bring these like developer-centric mindset to the team. Um, love working with engineers, users, and being a bridge between those two, um, translating user requirements to technical um, requirements. That was where my passion lied, and I still really enjoy doing that. So on the program management side, we do uh, standardizing policies around open source contribution, consumption, um, participation guidelines, licensing, resolution, and management. Um, on the engineering side, we also have our internal contribution tooling that we continue to improve, revamp, and um, create new features for. So after a while, we realized how large the scope actually is and that to run the program efficiently, we actually need to quickly staff our program. Um, so after me, we decided to have one more program manager to take on the participation and community building ex aspect. And Kay, uh, given her non-traditional background, is very customer-centric and really good addition to our team. And we also started to onboard um, full-time engineers who can dedicate their time in building out our tooling. So maybe Kay and Priya can talk a bit about that too. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, I, I joined the team and I think initially I was like, what is, what is my role going to be here? But uh, you quickly find out that it's so important to make sure that your developers understand what journey you want to take them on. And communication is so important, um, especially when you're trying to integrate a new initiative into the firm. Um, so my work really heavily depends on how do we create a sense of community within the firm. Um, um, but how do we extend ourselves uh, beyond the four walls as well to make sure that we are uh, engaging with the external community as well? Yeah, 
I think uh, I can talk about why any engineer and my role was important in OSPO. So we had a tool for um, open source contribution, but that tool was pretty old and we wanted to create something new, addressing all the issues we had with the previous tool. And also we needed some engineer who can closely work with the tool and understand the pain point of any contributor. Other than working on tool, I think engineers are important to work on data matrices and dashboards to quantify and evaluate the contribution growth and to identify how many active contributors we have in GS, how many contributors we have which are not associated with GS. Also, uh, moreover to that, I believe having engineering point of view to understand and track, uh, tackle any problem is very important for the success of any product. That's great. And, and Priya, I think one of the interesting things about your job is, is you are an engineer working in an OSPO. Mm -hmm. and obviously, OSPOs are usually there to serve engineers, but you're actually an engineer serving an OSPO serving the engineers. So there's, uh, that, that's an interesting kind of... Yeah, of course, because being an engineer, I have used like tons of libraries and frameworks, and I know how difficult it is for any financial institute to onboard any library and it, is, it was like next to impossible if you want to contribute to those libraries or you want to fix anything but that's very interesting that Goldman Sachs is motivating their developers to give back to the community. A nice one and um, I'm going to go back to Kay for a second because Kay you've kind of got a theory about how your OSPO works based on your experiences in retail right? Yeah, definitely. So um, as you know, our OSPO is fairly new. So we have a lot of initiatives and a lot of uh, projects um, that we wanted to accomplish this year. And I say like, no matter what we're working on, we always concentrate on three Ps. And this is something that I took away from retail and that's people, product and presentation. So people concentrating on your developers, knowing who they are, knowing what their interest lies in. Um, your and your product. Um, so knowing that your product will reflect your people, um, and this can be anything from tooling to open source foundations. Uh, presentation, where will this product live and how do you pr promote this product externally and internally? Lovely, yeah. Um, okay, I'm just, sorry. I'm, uh... Okay, so um, I think, uh, Yes, so I've kind of gone a bit off, off, off the track here, haven't I? But um, I was wondering if um, my next question is going to be around, you know, the, how you find working in an OSPO. So as I said at the beginning, other people's experiences, that OSPOs can be very different in structure in different organizations. And there'll probably be people in this room who are just embarking on their OSPO journey. You know, it is a really popular thing to start doing. So um, I think what I'd like to ask you is, what have you found, what, what has come as a surprise in, you know, starting your OSPO? What, what are the things that people will be surprised to hear happening? Um, yeah, so having a well-rounded OSPO actually entails so many things. The scope is really large. And usually we think of license management, we think of contributor license agreements, or actually contributing to open source projects or consuming software packages. But I think what's really cool about our OSPO is that we're super developer centric. And some examples is we have this OSPO ambassadorship that we called. We set up quarterly meetings or irregular meetings with OSPOs or relevant teams from other companies. So these can be places from the buy side in the financial industry or just other tech giants in the tech industry in general. And by talking to these people, we share knowledge, resources, the uh, difficulties we have faced, what made we successful, and it really helps us to grow and um, understand what might enable us to uh, achieve more and help our developers more. Um, kind of related to that, we also have a lot of internal events and awareness um, promotion workshops. So we started by integrating open source to our onboarding boot camps for all engineers who just joined Goldman Sachs. And now that when everyone onboards to GS, they know that open source uh, program office is there, that we're here to help you every step along the way, anything 
around open source, you can come to us. So there's this one team of subject matter experts who can help you. Everything about open source. Um, along with that, we also have special workshops where we invite organizations such as FINELS to talk about how to participate in working groups and other events or workshops such as how do I start contributing to open source projects, how do I consume, which licenses means what, um, or how do I contribute open source projects on the side as my hobby. So. A lot of these workshops, the goal is to increase awareness of open source in GS um, and continue to shift that mindset for people that open source is the way to go. Um, yeah, so I think that's what's unique about our OSPO. I mean, that, is, that also speaks to my experience as well of, of working in open source in banks. What you've described there, sort of a lot of that is all about changing minds and training and culture. And I think th those are perhaps not obvious at the outset, but you know, in banking, we don't have a strong culture of, of sharing stuff and, and working together in, uh, with our competitors, perhaps. So I think you, it's really interesting to hear that you say that. And also, I, I, I've helped out with that. I came along to your, your Goldman Sachs uh, presentation. You did. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, Okay, so um, I want to turn to um, Kay and ask, wh what do you see as the challenges if, if people here want to, want to build an OSPO in their organization? What, what are the challenges they're going to face? Yeah, I think one of the challenges that I've seen uh, working with the work that I do is there's kind of this perception in, or narrative that it's a little bit too hard to participate in the open source community or that you can't do it at all, um, especially within the firm that we work in uh, or industry that we work in with so many regulations. And so our goal is to really build a yes, you can culture around open source participation and to really establish an open source um, inclusive experience where no matter what level of experience you have in open source that the door is there and it's welcoming. Vicky, did you have any other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think first thing our OSPO is still so new as you might have already gleaned. We formed in August 2021 so we're only one plus years old a lot of people at GS still don't really know about us. That's why we continue to have these events, have these internal workshops to promote the OSPO and open source in general. Um, secondly, we do get a lot of questions about software package licenses. And this is totally understandable because developers are not lawyers. Um, sometimes they have questions around non-traditional licenses, dual licenses, and we have set up a process on guiding them throughout um, legal consultations, IP reviews, and um, with the OSPO in general. So I think I would say um, overall, it's really a cultural shift and shift of mindset to go from proprietary to open source first. And that will take some time, maybe not a year or two, but a longer period of time. And the OSPO will be here along the way with our developers. Awesome. Yeah. And um, I think my next, the next question I think the audience would like to know is, and this is difficult for Goldman Sachs and probably lots of other banks, right, to, to share, you know, what they're working on and what they're working towards. But um, Priya, as the engineer in the, in the team, maybe you can kind of give us some, some insights about what, what Goldman Sachs are working towards building for, you know, to improve their development, developer experience in the future for people using the OSPO. Yeah, sure. So I believe engineers make OSPO a better ecosystem. Um, GS as a firm, like if you want to contribute or open source anything from the firm device, uh, it's just not a simple commit. You have to go through the compliance and regulations where they make sure that you are not putting any sensitive information out. Information related to the SSN accounts, information related to the account numbers. Um, you are not leaking any intellectual property in form of proprietary code, like trading algorithms. So engineers can help you to develop an infrastructure which can make sure that your product is healthy, it doesn't have any security flaws, and it is not leaking any intellectual properties. 
I believe engineer can also help you with providing a lot of data matrices and dashboards, which can help you deciding your policies, your goals, your strategies. And data can also help you deciding your, like determining what your position in open source and retaining your resources and hiring new resources, which are open source enthusiast. I believe engineer can better understand the problems and difficulties any contributor is having, and they can mitigate it and make the open source contribution part of their everyday life. Awesome. So, I mean, I think that's somewhat elliptical, but it does give us a feeling of, of what you guys are trying to build. I, certainly, there's a huge scope for automation there, isn't there, in terms of all of the bureaucracy around running an OSPO and, and trying to minimize that for your team right because if you're going from hundreds of developers to thousands of developers all contributing to open source then you're definitely going to need lots of good tooling in order to try and um, stop that turning into a huge effort for the team and having to hire an even you know bigger ospo group um, and i think uh yes so um, one thing that Finos does, um, and I'll just go to the next slide, actually. Uh, so there's some, some links on the screen of, of uh, things you can explore after, after this talk. But uh, one thing Finos does is we have a thing called the Open Source Readiness Forum, which uh, Goldman Sachs are quite active members of. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, and also on here is the, the Goldman Sachs developer blog, which you can check out. Um, now, uh, the idea of open source readiness is to really help uh, financial organizations, members of Finos, to get started in, in their OSPO journey and, and continue the sort of thing that, that you guys have been doing. Um, and obviously, getting everybody together at, at, at events like the monthly uh, OSR SIG, Special Interest Group Meeting, means that you can all share ideas and information and learn you know do, have sessions a bit like this where you're actually learning from each other so that's super useful and i'm on behalf of finos i'd like to thank goldman sachs for all the effort they put into the open source readiness sig um let's have a a quick let, let's expand on that right because um talking to this group here what would your advice be on starting an ospo what, where would you go with that who wants to start So kind of like building a product where we always do usability testing, my advice would be listen to your developers, talk to them, find out what the blockers are, what the pain points are, and prioritize those. Figure out uh, what you want to focus on first, and then you will know who to staff and how to staff your team. Build from there and what goals you want for your first one to three years of OSPO. So I think that would be my best advice for um, anyone who's interested in building an open source team in the firm. Um, my advice would be that your OSPO and legal team should have the best partnership ever. Um, I think working on projects and initiatives uh, that we've accomplished, it wouldn't have been possible without the legal team, total time and total commitment. Um, basically, we are one team, but uh, that's my advice is to build a team where everyone is on the same page, everyone understands you know, who's responsible for what, so things can be executed. Yeah, one piece of advice I want to give is have engineers. I will emphasize have engineers because they can really automate your tools and build the tools which can increase developer efficiency. They can also impose open source security measures and they can connect workflow and firm policy in a very developer friendly manner. So have engineers, yeah? Yeah, yeah have that's, engineers. That's one of the key takeaways I think from Priya. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, listen, um, I'm going to throw it open to the audience now. Does anyone want to ask a question of our amazing OSPO people? I'm just curious, as we're starting our own OSPO, um, how uh, staffed are you? How many people uh, consist of the OSPO at Goldman right now? I believe there's is it eight of us. Yeah. Eight people? Yeah. Right, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Hi, you mentioned the involvement of legal. Do you have a dedicated legal person? Because you probably need a lot of time from them, right? In your team, or do you just 
work with them and their team? Yeah, uh, they're not actually like a part of like the OSPL team itself. They are an extension, um, but they are very well versed and knowledgeable about open source. Um, so we're really grateful for that. We lean on them for a lot of advice, and um, I would say they're very developer centric too. They spend a lot of time with our developers. Yes. Sorry, I'll just. So it was the question, do you have any mainframes? I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I ask Kay if she knows what a mainframe is? <laughs> uh, anyone else? Yeah, hi. Um, I was wondering, to what degree, I guess, if any, is the OSPO engaged directly with open source communities outside of the firm, as opposed to enabling people within the firm to work with the communities directly? Can you speak a little bit about that? Sorry, can you repeat your question? I just yeah, wanted to... yeah, so it's a question about engagement with external communities. Uh, and I'm wondering, to what degree the OSPO itself directly engages with communities versus working with people at Goldman Sachs to engage themselves? into the communities? Yeah, I, I think because our, you know, our hospital is fairly brand new, but we are really concentrated on being the bridge to our developers and really extending them, again, outside of the four walls that they work in. I think it's important for our developers to have personal growth um, and to work on projects that also uh, we depend on as a firm. Um, so we are very much in touch with that. And it's something that we are still trying to elevate as far as like our developers experience and really working closely with the foundations that uh, we work with as well. Right. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do this one first. Yeah, it's nearer. Yeah. Um, so I was curious as to, you know, what was the tipping point at Goldman where they kind of sat around and said, well, we better form a program office around open source, right? At, at what point did it become so evident that, you know, the organization would hire people and start spending money in this way, right? What, what was that tipping point like? And maybe also what was the earliest uh, advent of open source at Goldman? I had a little bit of experience there because I remember trying to implement SourceForge inside of Goldman. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> well, we, we want to hand this off to Rob, who's the lead of the OSPO, uh, so he can kind of share. Uh, so repeat the question again. It was, what, what's the impetus for us? So, so my question was, what was the tipping point where they decided they needed a program office? Uh, from, you know, the investors in that Uh, I think it was a couple of things. I think the f an impetus was the contribution of Legend as well as the other work that we were doing, right? So we were starting to get and continue to get, and you'll, you've heard some more of that today. There, there was more and more traction that's happening with the Legend contribution. And then as, as uh, my colleagues alluded to, we had the contributions before of GS Quant, now of uh, GS Collections, now Eclipse Collections. Um, we had about 18 to 20 discrete projects in our GitHub org. We just were getting to a point where, you know, as they were saying, we, we just having that be decentralized, it just didn't make much sense. And part of our overall engineering strategy is really to be developer focused and developer centric. And we really wanted to encourage our, our folks and our developers to be able to uh, get a seat at the table, earn a seat at the table by authentically participating in open source communities. And we wanted a centralized way to really uh, facilitate and organize that across the uh, engineering division is. And as we alluded to uh, earlier, you know, we use memos. Uh, that's a big part of our organizational culture. And so um, there was a lot of thought that Rohan and, and, and Bella, who unfortunately can't be here, put into really making that business case around how do we build developer centricity around enabling open source. There's also some, some key elements around developer attraction and de developer retention that we felt were really important around enabling open source.
program or did the legal and compliance kind of force the issue from the perspective of, hey, we're contributing to the code, we don't want a lawsuit? I, I don't think it was an e either or. Again, as, as you know, Priya, Vicky, and Kay have said, uh, our compliance team, our tech risk team, our legal team, our executive office, all of those folks have been really wonderful partners to us. So it's really been about enabling our developers and allowing our developers to all collectively work together and collaborate. Um, and um, surely, as we all know, by dint of us being here at this conference, um, open source can be a key source of innovation. And we wanted to be part of that innovation party, if you will. And a lot of that's happening in, in, in open source. Uh, can, can someone just let me know how long we've got left? Have we got time for another question? Seven minutes. Okay, we're good. So, uh, can you talk to me about uh, some of the toolings that you guys built inside to manage this whole open source, uh, you know, or the OSS office to help them out? Yeah, so we have a tool which integrates intellectual property review and it's a systemized access of GitHub so that once the uh, any contributor get the access on any project, he can simply use the GitLab to push any code out. And then we also have dashboard and metrics for tracking and evaluating the growth, like how many, what the percentage of growth we are having in active contributors month over month, week over week, and what the number of PRs and MRs raised by, raised by those contributors. Yeah, so these are for the project Goldman has approved for contributions. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. No. <laughs> yeah, it's internal too. And why is that? Why, why, why is it not open source? Can we not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, any, anyone, else, anyone else got a question? Okay. I'm curious, because this is really good citizenship, um, whether your statistics on your contributions to the open source community are rolling up into your, your ESG in any way, because that would be really cool if it did. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, so, so a lot of firms, um, you know, obviously they're uh, reporting on um, different metrics for ESG, uh, for, you know, environmental, social, and governance. And it seems like open source contribution is a form of great corporate citizenship. And it's also part of the governance of a, of a, of a firm, right, obviously. And it would be really cool to see these, these statistics distilled and, and, you know, even reported up into like the ESG representations of a bank because then we could start to look at, you know, all of the different firms and, and their contributions and, and perhaps encourage more of them. Yeah, so we have been focusing on gathering uh, metrics from our open source contribution and consumption. And of course, we have a lot of internal resources and uh, reporting on that that we report to senior leadership. And one of our goals for next year is to better visualize that and then um, perhaps publish it to the public. Right now, we do have this website on developer site, uh, developer.gs.com, where we publish some of our metrics and all of the great things that we've been doing with open source. So if you go on there, you will see some of the data that we have published so far. Um, we're also on the open source index where you can see our numbers of contribution. But next year, for sure, one of our main goals would be to better um, provide and visualize those data. All right, I think we're gonna have to leave it there. So can I have a really big round of applause for Vicky, Kay, and Priya. Thanks very much, guys. That was lovely.